has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bands, coast to coast in the biggest way possible. Hanging out of bands, eating a broken, eating a bad apple with a bad attitude. Hanging around a bunch of bad out of bands, hey, bad lot, bad dude, bad breath, bad attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Pharrell place. So right across the river into the woods from our granny's out on the back deck right now. Working a thumb of Acapulco gold because she can in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, directing traffic, some kind of fashion, shake it up, should do that. I'm up in the camera, flat to flat to party up. Rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, what a mess is tattered, tattered, my brain splattered all over Manhattan, should do be shake it up. Oh, woo, woo. I think I might have caught some from Keith, should do that. Yeah, yeah, it's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it, yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy, Carver. Hi, this afternoon. Mafia running it with Hayden Fried, LTN, and Kansas City Mo. A birthday roll call on a terrible towel Tuesday. The Zinger, 27 today. Porzingis, Laramie Tunsil, 28. Paul DeJong, 29. Golden Tate, 34. Houston Street, 39. Kerry Rhodes, 40. Grady Sizemore, 40. Tony Amani, 52 on the back nine. Cedric Sabalos, 53 on the 13th hole. Tim Wakefield, 56 today, a year younger than Uncle Futrelli. And Burgess Owens, former Jet and Raider safety, 71. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. What up, TA in Omaha? Hold on a second. Mafia, did you remember to shave your nose hair today? Shut up, I shaved my nose hair. Oh, can you believe this guy? Unbelie what about Haro's nose hair? I'll ask him. Is he on today? He has till tomorrow at least to shave his. We got trade deadline updates out the Yinger. Juan Soto to San Diego in the way. In a massive gargantuan deal. Hosmer was going to be in the deal, but he's going to the Red Sox late this afternoon in a deal. How do you like moving from San Diego to that absolute shack hole, Boston. <laughs> That's like getting sent to Leavenworth. We got a double dip out there today at Petco with the soft serve ice cream, dripping wet and delicious with sprinkles starting in just over an hour. The Yankees trade Ernest and Julio Gallo to the Dodgers. <laughs> oh, Carver High, what is the over under on when he'll be a, a DFA? He ain't going to hit 125 with the Dodgers and stick any more than my deodorant. Orioles trade all-star closer Jorge Lopez to the Twins, whoever the hell that is. Marlins trade Anthony Bass and Zach Pop to Toronto. Who the F is that? Pirates traded Jose Quintana. Don't make fun of my Pirates, Carver. All right. If you know what's good for you, mister. Reds trade Tommy Fligham. Excuse me. Fam to the Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox get Cosmer and Fam. They're in last place. We got the Lions share coming up. Plus, Cody Decker of BetMGM's baseball podcast will roll with us today on everything going on with the deadline. We got all the baseball for you, everything, all kinds of highlights. We got a polar bear sighting. Uh, Soto goes yard in his last at bat against. Uh, you know, Scherzer hit a bomb off of him last night. Mets still won. We got a Rosario walk-off. We got a Urshela walk-off. We got a Judge. Ring the bell, Carver High. When are they going to get? Hold on. Are you ever going to get a bell for the show, Mafia? We, we need a goddamn bell. I mean, we make so much money for these people. Can we get a bell in here? George Bell. God, your mother. Although I do like her. Aaron Boone talking on the show today. We got, uh, how about Christian Vasquez doing an interview with the Red Sox while he had just been dealt. They yanked him off the field. Pro far with homers in four straight games. Get the prop boat engines in the water, Carver High, for your boy Jerickson Profar. We got everything. An Alomar Jr. RBI double, all that. 
Bryce Harper has the pins removed from his thumb. And we got rookie of the year raises odds to win the World Series. Tonight's games will break it all down, make us some money. Sean Pendergast will join us from Houston 610 Sports Radio. Today in Carver High history will be fun. Dolphins lose first round pick in 23, a third runner in 24 for violating the integrity of the game. All about tampering. Steven Ross suspended through October 17th. What does he care? He owns 90% of the buildings in Manhattan. Who cares if you're suspended, fired, or otherwise when you own all of New York City? People dressed in plastic bags. Anyway, Brian Flores is disappointed. Why don't you worry about coaching the Steelers there, Fem Lips? Tom Brady will not be charged with anything because he's the greatest human being ever on the face of the earth, including Jesus. No word yet from Roger Goodell on the Watson ruling. That's because he has until tomorrow at 9 a.m. to do it. We got Stefanski on the show today, Kyle Shanahan on the show today, Brady on the show today. I mean, it's unbelievable. We got Ohio State AD Gene Smith says you can't ignore the potential of a 16-team playoff. Let's get it on, baby. Greg Norman says live offered Tiger seven to eight hundred million dollars to come over, and he turned it down. You don't have to take seven, eight hundred million when you're already worth well over a billion dollars. Boy, Jeannie Buss had her Twitter account hacked. I wonder by who. Arash Marcazio will join us from 1090 in San Diego to talk about the Padres. Plus, Adam Kaplan, our NFL insider from Chargers Camp out in Lipstick City. Grab a cold one. It don't matter what time it is. It's coast to coast. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell Coast to Coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for one. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Begins. Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Seattle Mariners acquiring Luis Castillo in a trade with the Cincinnati Reds. Bert, in your opinion, what is Seattle getting with Castillo? They are getting a proven ace atop of the rotation, and it pairs him with their young talent in that rotation and gives them a playoff caliber rotation that could dominate. And that's exactly what they want. They want to end this long playoff drought that they have, and they're incredibly optimistic, even after a slow start. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The Dallas Cowboys worth $7.64 billion. The next closest team is the Los Angeles Rams at $5.91 billion. You want to talk about the ultimate investment? You want to get in front with Bitcoin or, you know, in some of the markets or play the stocks? How about if you just had enough cash to actually buy an NFL team and just make profit over profit? It doesn't matter if your team wins. Only on Sports Grid.
You smelling all this, Gary? Love that smell, KG. See, this is what retirement's all about. Slowing down, smelling stuff, like these. This smells like, oh. <laughs> Covering the spread, baby! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! What are you looking at, Gary? Stop looking at my flowers, Gary. Avert your eyes. All right, for all back on Coast to Coast, uh, you got to get this BetMGM app. Honestly, I mean, it's literally replaced my wife as the most important thing in my life. I just am constantly on this thing. I mean, I'm just playing with it every day, making all kinds of stacks. Bands will make her dance. Bands will make her dance. Bands will make her dance. And listen to this. Bet $10 on any baseball game in the show, you know, in the majors. 200 bucks to you, baby, if either team hits a home run. That should take about five minutes. Bonus code MLBHR2022. That's MLB Home Run 2022. $10 on any Major League Baseball game. Get 200 if somebody hits a home run. They're just giving money away. It's a beautiful thing. Let's bring him in. Carver High, he's very emotional today with the deadline coming up here in uh, just under three hours. He's very emotional. Uh, absolutely very emotional. That's right. As we work a little bit closer to the 6 p.m. Eastern trade deadline, Scotty, in Major League Baseball. Of course, we have a few deals that have gone down already today. We will keep you updated through the next couple of hours here on Coast to Coast with any others. The biggest one, Scotty, by far is Juan Soto going to the Ugh. Padres. Look out, a massive deal. Shaking the foundation of the National League. Uh, here we go. Here's what the Nationals, Scotty, are getting back. Uh, pitcher Mackenzie Gore, shortstop C.J. Abrams, outfielder Robert Hassel III, outfielder James Wood, pitcher Yarlin Susana, all going to Washington for Juan Soto and... Josh Bell. Let's not forget that either, Scotty. You get Josh Bell in the deal along with Juan Soto. Major move for the Padres. Well, can they leave that up there, that uh, graphic, so I can uh, just go through it for a second? Because, uh, first of all, Josh Bell would probably be the number two guy on the market in terms of a power hitter that was available uh, at today's deadline. So he was going to move one way or the other. And go figure, he moves to San Diego along with Soto at 23, the most dangerous man in baseball with the most dangerous lethal bat in baseball and three years, that means three postseason years in San Diego uh, at their disposal without him having the right to do anything about it. So, I mean, they got the most magnificent player. He's been compared to Ted Williams for Christ's sakes. But look, Mackenzie Gore is already a major league pitcher. This kid, Hassel is an absolute stud who jacks home runs. The kid Abrams is a phenom at shortstop, making defensive stops like better than Derek Jeter. I mean, honestly, at his age, when he came up from Kalamazoo to the Yankees, he was nothing compared to this kid. This kid has a glove and an arm and reach out in the outfield like nobody's business. If you've ever seen him make plays, you'll know real fast why they wanted him, Rizzo, in D.C. Also, the kid Wood can flat out play. I think the other factor here is they wanted Hosmer. They ended up getting uh, Susanna and a player to be named. That doesn't matter. Hosmer went uh, to the Red Sox. Let's face facts. Eric Hosmer, they've tried to dump his ass for over a year now. They have not liked Hosmer in San Diego. If they say they have they're lying it's never worked out there he's never been great there like he was in kansas city uh he's been average at best and raked them for tons of money now he's going to go be average for the last place red sox to get soto in that lineup mike is absolutely unbelievable go figure machado tatis soto bell in the same lineup and they already have nasty pitching now they just need to get into the playoffs and see if they could dance 
with the likes of the Dodgers, who they've always been jealous of, the big brother up the coast in la 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 lipstick city. Let's don't forget, they made a major move yesterday to get Josh Hader, too. Uh, so they uh, added Hader uh, to the back of their bullpen. And, and, and uh, look, this is what this is what it all is now. Uh, the Padres, you talk about pushing the chips uh, into the middle, Scotty. Uh, that's exactly what's going on, because between the Hader deal and this Soto deal, that is uh, clearly all of their huge prospects that they have in the system. They are going for it. Now, I also heard this today. They have Soto for two more years. If they don't think they can sign him a year and a half from now, whatever, they can then flip him again and try to get some of that prospect base back. So that also kind of works into the theory here with the Padres. So. But, but let's be, let, let's be uh, clear. As you know, uh, let me rub my crystal ball. Yeah. Nobody. I've never met one person in my life. Eric Hosmer's wife is not going to sleep with him for six months because yeah. she's leaving San Diego for Boston and that hell hole. Let me tell you something. I've never met one person in my life that wants to leave San Diego. And I'm one of them. When I go down there surfing, like the fact that I didn't go surfing there last week on my vacation, my family doesn't even love me anymore. I mean, it's <laughs> San Diego or bust. There's only one place to live in this country, in this hell hole country. Honestly, with the politics and all the you know nonsense, can't even get an abortion. You heard me. The only place to live is San Diego, because in San Diego, I can go to the beach and look at chicks and G-strings, and I can go surfing, and I don't care how much my taxes are then. I don't care if it's 13%. Give me those chicks and keenies and a little surf, a little barrel roll. I'm good to go. And some of that freaky Acapulco, cushy kush, carbohydrate, don't get me started. Soft serve ice cream at Petco gets me sexual. I uh, got to have that soft serve out at Petco. Uh, speaking of that, uh, before I give you the other trades, there is a double header at what? Petco today. Uh, if you'd like to give your pick for game number one, uh, you Darvish is going for the Padres. Feltner is going for the Rockies. Uh, some big lumber here, Scotty. Minus 240 and seven and a half the total. Yeah. First pitch just under an hour from now. I was accused of Feltnering her up, but uh, found not guilty. Ooh. Give me the Padres and Darvish in the opener. And you know what I'm going to do in the nightcap, too, don't you? <laughs> I think I know what you're going to do in the nightcap. You're going to go for get the brooms out uh, for the nightcap <laughs> for the Padres. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big day for cream. San Diego. Ice cream! Uh, we'll, ice cream! We'll talk Crazy! About last night's win later on. Okay, here's the rest of what's happened so far today. Yankees trade Joey Gallo to the Dodgers. <laughs> uh, Gallo out. Uh, he heads a double-A pitcher. Uh, going back to the Yankees, uh, which is better than what I thought they'd get, Scotty, which was a bag of balls. So at least they he got uh, a warm body back uh, for Gallo. He's the sure. worst baseball player in the yes. history of Major League Baseball. In the entire history of the game, there has never been a worse baseball player than Ernest and Julio Gallo. Thank God I got a good nickname for him because he is a femme with that bat. I got to tell you, I have never seen a guy strike out more than him. And I mean, literally, I, there are teams, entire teams that strike out less than him. He's awful. Uh, the Orioles, who are only two and a half games back of that final wild card in the American League, uh, traded their closer, Jorge Lopez, having a tremendous year. Uh, to the Twins that? for three prospects. They traded Mancini last night. So despite the Orioles, Scotty, having this feel-good couple of months and only being two and a half out, it looks like we are selling uh, in Baltimore some pieces. So there you what go. What in the F are you doing when you're in a playoff chase and you give away your one of your best hitters? I'll take it back to yesterday. I said my daughter hits better than Trey Mancini. He does hit 20 points higher than my daughter. He hits around 270. She's around 250. But I got to say, uh, you get rid of your closer, one of your best players that fans love, and you're in a playoff chase. I mean, now you're not. As far as I'm concerned, they will not make the playoffs now because of that stupid-ass move they pulled today. Your heart.
starts racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The morning after. Fourth best number to win a World Series at plus 700. The Mets handle the Marlins over the weekend with a series sweep over the fish. The Mets have won six games DRS and end out the month of July at 64 and 37 straight up. It is the second best record for the Mets franchise in history at the end of July. The only team better, the 1986 New York Mets. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, I've just played my narrative for the under nine and a half. I suppose we should play the over for nine and a half. The reason why it would be set at nine and a half is one, I think some people are wagering that Sean Watson doesn't miss any time, right? You know, there would people be out there who say, look, if Watson's camp is appealing to get it down to zero games, then there's a chance that, you know, the Browns become like a 12 win team. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. The six-game suspension, Pharrell, is the baseline for a violation of the personal conduct policy uh, under Article 46. So she has found that there's a violation. Now, some people want to know, well, why not a year like the NFL wanted? Yes, they did want a year. She's not released her opinion yet to the public. The NFL is not. But it's generally believed that historical precedent has been brought into this, where they... The Sports Grid Network. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, you're talking about it later, uh, Carver High, but you just brought it up. I mean, it really was hilarious seeing was Tony gonna... fall asleep in the first <laughs> inning last night at uh, the White Sox game on the south side. Of I mean, he was out cold. He, he, Yeah, it was in the first inning. I mean, they, they got a real close-up look on him in the dugout, and he was just kind of the eyes were just like fluttering down, and the head was nodding a little bit. Like, honestly, bro. Like, I mean, it's it's the first inning. What are we doing out here? Uh, that's a rough scene. By the way, we'll talk about it later. They lose to the Royals again last night. Oh, uh, so that God. Just tells you how how embarrassing. Lost a game to both the Twins and the Guardians, who both won last night. So it wasn't a good night uh, on and off the field for the Chicago White Sox. Uh, I will also tell you, before we get into the lion's share, uh, Marlins trade relievers Anthony Bass and Zach Pop to the Blue Jays for one of their top prospects, Jordan Groshans. Both of those guys, Scotty, having real good years out of the pen, especially Bass. So that makes the Blue, Gen, uh, the Blue Jay relievers a lot stronger. Pirates traded Jose Quintana last night to the Cardinals. Why do the Pirates always help the Cardinals? I, I just don't understand. Like, why, what are you doing? Like, it's the Cardinals. You hate them. Why are you helping them? Can't, uh, between, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and between the Cardinals and the Yankees, I mean, the entire Yankee uh, roster played for the Pirates. Uh, and Tommy Pham went from the Reds to the Red Sox. 
Uh, we will discuss uh, later on the other Red Sox deal, uh, which was Christian Vasquez uh, and how he found out uh, about the deal. All right, here we go. The lion's share for tonight. Ooh. Not bad last night. The K props were all right. Judge bailed us out with a homer. Game props were pretty good as well. We went two and one on those, uh, including the Mets winning. Are you winning kidding? We made all kinds of money last all night. All kinds. All kinds. We did very well uh, all over the board. I'm That's drooling sure. in here. I made so much money. I just started drooling. Now, Is that a bad sign? Is that like an early not, stroke sign? I was just talking to you, and I felt sign. like the river, the, like the river yeah. Kwai was coming right down into my goat. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. Strikeouts. <laughs> uh, we have tried this a couple of times this year with guys coming back from injuries. Jacob deGrom back on the mound for the Mets, making his first start in 13 months, Scotty. Six and a half for deGrom. Minus 150 to the over, plus 105 to the under. We also need to factor in that the Nationals, uh, of course, this morning lost uh, half of their lineup with Soto and Bell uh, going out to San Diego. So it's not going to be uh, the best nine being fielded by Washington tonight. I'm still going under tonight for DeGrom, Scotty. I think he's only going to go four or five innings. Uh, I'm going to take a shot that he stays under. All right. Well, uh, you know, Bell never hit in that lineup in D.C. anyway. So they only had one guy in the entire lineup that ever got a hit, and that was Soto. So – I think DeGrom will strike out six and a half batters in the first inning. <laughs> there you go. Uh, over for Scotty, uh, for Jacob DeGrom tonight. Making How about an immaculate inning? <laughs> immaculate inning uh, for DeGrom to start things off. Corbin Burns next, uh, taking on the Buckos tonight. Seven oh. and a half now. This actually went down a little bit. It was eight and a half earlier. Uh, for Burns, minus 155 to the over, plus 116 to the under. He's gone over this number, Scotty, in five of his last seven starts, double digits three times during that. He faced the Pirates on July 1st, only five strikeouts. He did have 10 against them back in April. I'll go back to the over with Corbin tonight. Yeah, I'm on the over. The Pirates are a disaster, and... This guy is going to mow them down tonight in Pittsburgh. It's worth going to see if you like to watch a good pitcher. And uh, PNC is a great ballpark, so you can go watch the Pirates strike out all night. I'm with you. Spencer Strider gets the ball for the Braves tonight. We haven't used him in the lion's share in a while. Why? Hasn't been very good. He's back up to 7.5, though, facing the Phillies tonight. Plus 100 to the over, minus 145 to the under. He's under in his last two, including... Facing the Phillies in his last start, who he faces tonight. He had six. That would be an under tonight. He was also under against the Phillies in May. I will go under seven and a half for Spencer tonight. I'll go under as well. I think uh, he's in the running for sure for rookie of the year yes. in uh, the National League for sure. Uh, let me just say, uh, I think he's hit a wall a little bit, right? Like, uh, so he just... He looks like he's tired a little bit to me. Uh, he was striking out 10, 12 guys every time out, and then all of a sudden he's getting four and five. That's yes. when you know he's he's you know maybe needs to hit the brakes a little bit. I'll go with you on the under. Yeah, he had a stretch there in late June uh, into early July where he had double-digit strikeouts and three out of four starts. Things were looking really good, but it has cooled off considerably. Lastly, we will go to Christian Javier for the Strohs tonight. Seven and a half is the number plus 110 to the over, minus 160 to the under. He's under this number in three of his last four, Scotty. In fact, a little similar to Strider, if you remember. Had that string where he was going double digits for a bunch of starts and now has cooled off a little bit, been ending up in the 5-6 range his last few out. You know, after last night, what I saw that they lost to the Red Sox, that was embarrassing in Houston. I'll stay under with you there, too. There you go. There's the strikeouts for tonight. It is tater time on the lion's share. And look, I think at this point, we might as well just keep going. Right? I don't like playing home run props at plus 150, Scotty. I mean, that's like, that's kind of silly. It's really low, but you're going to cash it every single night. I guess right. you have to keep playing what? it. Plus what? 150, judge to homer again tonight against the Mariners. What did I say yesterday? I'll bet on him every night this week, and I'll make at least 700 bucks by Saturday. <laughs> okay? 
So I'm yeah. rolling with him again every night, and he hit for us last night. Ring the bell. Everybody's happy. I mean, not only that, he had a double every single time he comes to the plate. I expect a home run now. I don't even – like a single is like, you know, just yeah. foreplay. I need – a yeah. home run every time he comes to the plate. Uh, he's almost giving that to you at this point. Uh, amazing the tear that Judge is on right now. Next, we will go to the Blue Jays. Who else has been smoking hot, Scotty? How about Matt Chapman? Yeah. Four homers over the weekend against the Tigers. They've got the Rays tonight, plus 360 for Matty to stay hot against Tampa. The guy hit 465 in the last 10 days and raked all kinds of home runs. I am on him as well. And don't forget, I know you got another one. Throw my bonus chip in there today, too. We're I'm gonna getting get all it. kinds of worked I, up I, over here. I, 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 am, I, am leaving, I am saving the best for last. We are going to throw uh, that bonus ball in after I get to the next two. Nolan Arenado for the Redbirds tonight against the Cubbies. Plus 280 for him, had a homer over the weekend, has had a couple against the Cubs this year. Plus 280 for Nolan. I'll say no on uh, Nolan Arenado because he's going to, I think, uh, captain the, the U.S. team in the World Baseball yeah, Classic that well, no one's going to watch. Yeah, Trout. Yeah, I say uh, no. Him and Trout are going to be involved. Uh, and finally, before we get to the bonus ball, you mentioned it. Astros losing to the Red Sox last night, I think, bounce back tonight. And who's usually the guy that leads a bounce back when the Astros need one? It's Jordan Alvarez, plus 210 tonight uh, to homer against the Sox. Every time you put that guy up on this board, he hits a home run. So I'm there with you <laughs> He's again. Been Every time you put him up, he hits one. <laughs> uh, he has been very good. You mentioned the bonus ball here. Uh, this is for game one of the Padre Rocky doubleheader. That's going to be starting in about 40 minutes that we just talked about. Jerickson Profar, Scotty, he has been on a tear with homers in four straight. How about plus 525 yeah. for Profar today against Feltner and the Rockies? Are we going in for it? Yes. Well, look, uh, this guy's got four straight games with a home run. Everything else has turned up roses for the Padres uh, today. They get the dream uh, deal with Soto. Uh, they're playing a, a, a double header in the sunshine at Petco. Not only do I take the bet in game one, I think he's going to hit one in game two as well. Christ, give me the odds <laughs> on that. That'll be uh, okay. six straight we'll games. You. Why not? Everything else is turning up. We'll get you that one later on uh, when they put it on the board. All right, game props for the night. Yankees to win against the Mariners tonight and all total here over 9.5 plus 275. I think we'll see a little bit like last night. That was a 7-2 final. We'll go a little bit more than that. Yankees win over the 9.5 plus 275. I mean, it just blows my mind how they win every game. Like, I thought last night you'd see Seattle come in and give them a game and they kick their ass. Uh, I think it's Jamison shots at Tyone tonight. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm yes. going to go with him again to win. And yes, the over. I'm with you on all that. All they do is rake. You got Jamison shots at Tyone and Gilbert Grape uh, tonight with the Mariners and the Yankees up in the Bronx. So let's get Great some matchup. runs. The, the Royals and the White Sox. This is where we're looking under tonight. Under four in the first five innings at plus 120. It was very sleepy last night as we saw Tony fall asleep. Uh, maybe again tonight with Giolito and Keller on the mound. Under four in the first five innings, White Sox and Royals. So, yeah, I have a hard time believing that. Keller is awful. I think the White Sox are going to score runs in the first five innings. Uh, and not, and not because of Giolito. Pitched good against the Yankees last time out. Uh, nine strikeouts, did very well. Looking for him to maybe carry that over against the Sox tonight. And finally, Blue Jays and Rays is where I'm going for the big ball of the night. Both teams to score four-plus runs. Gossmanis and Rasmussen don't care. Both to score four or more. That's paying plus 290 tonight for the Lions share, Scotty. Let's go. Yeah, I think the pitching's too good there. I'm going to say no. No, not with me on the Lions share tonight. Lots of runs for Tampa and Toronto. Chapman will homer two for you, Scotty. There you go. <laughs> the Lions share presented by Bet MGM.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die. For and them. Don being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. like the Dodgers though are either just snooping around just in case or maybe they are just there to prop up the offers that St. Louis or San Diego more specifically will have to bring to the table the Dodgers you're right snooping around going we're ultra talented we're going to be one of the favorites regardless here but you know we don't want to see Juan Soto for the next decade in San Diego we'd like to take that steam right off the top and it's only on sports grid the morning after. Let's focus on today's game, Tom. And you're not thinking about Mad Max and his pitching matchup against the Nats. It's the offense for the Mets that has caught your eye. Yeah, and that would be Pete Alonso or Starling Marte to hit home runs. Alonso's at plus 250, Starling Marte's at plus 420. And that's because they're going up against Patrick Corbin, the left-hander for the Nats, who is absolutely terrible, allowing a 521 slugging to righties, 1.65 home runs per nine. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. 15 year period for Bill Russell, starting with his junior year at San Francisco. Won two straight national championships, 55 game winning streak. Wins the gold medal in the 56 Olympics. And then 13 years in the NBA, 12 trips to the finals, 11 championships. Last two serving as the first black coach in the NBA. The Sports Grid Network. All right, throw back on Coast to Coast. Cody Decker's uh, with the Bet MGM podcast, and he joins us to talk about everything going on in baseball with the trade deadline today uh, and everything else shaking out around the majors. Cody, good to see you. Uh, tell me more about, first of all, uh, the Bet MGM podcast and all the other uh, shows you do. I know you do a bunch of other shows, and then like I'm, I'm seeing like you do uh, a show, Am I Crazy?, is that with your wife or something? She's super hot and you're doing a show with her too? Like, what am I seeing over here? I'm very interested in all this. All right, let's strap in. Here's all the shows I do. BetMGM MLB Podcast, powered by BetQL. That's just a simple podcast. Big Time Baseball Podcast with myself, John Heyman, and of course, Tony Gwynn Jr. We'll have a live show tomorrow. That is going to be a lot of fun as well. I have a live show every Saturday on the BetQL Network and CBS Sports Stations throughout the country. Of course, called Bet for the Cycle, a live four-hour gambling show where pure chaos takes place nonstop. A lot of side bets, and usually I get punished with something horrible. I had to eat a Vegemite sandwich three weeks ago. Scotty, have you ever had a Vegemite? my sandwich no they've tried to do that to me and i've been able to uh, forego those plans i've been able to circumvent all that activity how was it oh it's a lot like uh it's very similar to eating a dead body i strongly suggest not doing it it was a nightmare uh on top of that i also got myself a show on 670 the score in chicago called down the line with cody decker that's brought to you by circuit resort and casino not to mention i do home run props for bet mgm you can catch me all the time on uh, carton and evans uh you can catch me 
all over the place, really, quite frankly. And you mentioned the show with my wife. That was a show called Swings and Misses when I retired in 2019. My wife, Jennifer Sturger, and I had a show with uh, Radio.com Sports, which is now Odyssey Sports, better known as the BetQL Network. And uh, we had that show for a couple of years, and it was badass. It was awesome. Got to do a show with my wife, and now I'm just everywhere all the time. It's a blast. I love it. That's awesome. Uh, that has to be cool that you're living in Lipstick City and you're uh, doing shows in uh, Chicago and New York and everywhere else and still uh, doing it in L.A. When I did Pharrell on the Bench all the years on The Fan in New York, I was doing it out of Culver City in Los Angeles. Well, I fooled everyone for a while. Eventually, they forced me uh, to move to New York. They said, you're either moving to New York or you're fired. I'm like, why? They're like, because you don't listen. <laughs> dude you're not it's the same problem i've been dealing with for the last couple of years i've been getting away with living in la and keep in mind i'm born and raised out here and i've people know that i'm here but i have a feeling my time is nearly up people are going to start making me be in certain cities for more times in fact i'll be in chicago in two weeks looking really forward to it great town all right what do you think of uh this deal for soto and you know more so for me on the other side now we're learning that void is the player to be named because hosmer's not going to go to dc he was able to void that deal uh in his contract he didn't have to go so luke void imagine that you go from the yankees to the padres and then they ship you to the nationals that's like getting sent to leavenworth that is a tough, tough draw. You're a guy that went from the New York Yankees, think you're going to make a huge impact on the San Diego Padres, knowing full well that this team is going to make a serious playoff run. Hey, and the season starts, you have no Fernando Tatis Jr., Manny Machado playing absolutely out of his mind, but you got the same division as the Los Angeles Dodgers, and you think you're going to be the centerpiece of it all, and you're going to finish the year on this Nats team? Oof! You know what? If there's anything, anything in the world that Luke Voigt deserves, it's like a brand new Porsche and it better be sent by Eric Hosmer immediately because Eric Hosmer just screwed Luke Voigt. Yeah, and Eric Hosmer basically was average at best in San Diego. And I would prefer the Porsche 911 GS3, which I was in two weeks ago, doing a buck 90 on the Garden State Parkway, headed to the Freehold Racetrack to place bets. And I was scared to death. That car hauls ass. All right, so the rate that the Nationals got of all those minor leaguers, though, those are the best players in the Padres organization uh, from, you know, the minors. And one of them's already a major league pitcher. They got great players in Nationals. I know their fans aren't going to believe it, but I don't think they know anything about what's going on in the farms. I can't stress this enough. I played for the San Diego Padres for seven years. I love the organization. In fact, my last year, the year I got called up to the big leagues, A.J. Preller was my general manager. And let me tell you, that guy is a madman. And no nothing was safe in the San Diego Padres system this last week. And yes, this is not just kind of a haul. This is one hell of a haul. You didn't get their top prospect. You got their top four prospects, one of which is in the big leagues right now and currently with the third shortest odds in the uh, rookie of the year odds, but although he is hurt right now in Mackenzie Gore. C.J. Abrams was the first pick in 2019 Hansel the third he was a first pick just last year he's an high a absolutely tearing it up this is four not just four good prospects these are four ready-made prospects that will be in the big leagues within the next three years the Nats future is a lot brighter than Nats fans think. Yes, it sucks to lose Juan Soto. I don't want to lose Juan Soto. All I want is to see Juan Soto wear any uniform of a team that I love. However, you just got maybe the single best haul of any prospects I've ever seen in the past 20 years. I know, it's, it's just crazy. And then, you know, Carver High said it best. I never even mentioned Hater. Can you believe they pulled that off? Yesterday, I speculated... The Brewers have to know something about this guy to give up on him, the way he closed doors for them in Milwaukee. Do you believe after the couple of really bad outings that he had after he said he didn't want to go to the All-Star game where he got walked off twice, do you think they think there's something wrong with him that they would dump him as they're winning the Central and going to the playoffs and you get rid of that guy? As much as I want to say yes, and it seems like David Stearns possibly knows something that A.J. Preller doesn't, I'm going to say no, and here's why. You got Devin Williams, who hasn't given up a run since Nam pitching in the eighth inning. Quite frankly, that guy's a ready-made closer. Go ahead and throw him in the closer spot. You can make the same argument with the Padres and Rodgers, who was brought in from Minnesota to be their closer, and he's been abysmal as a closer. You take him out of that role and move him into the eighth or seventh inning role setup spot over in Milwaukee, and all of a sudden, that bullpen might be fortified. And quite frankly, this was the time to move Hayter 
harder for them because this is the way they can maximize their value. And the fact that they had a Devin Williams ready to just slide right into that spot, there was never a better time to maximize the value than today. And they did it. And I think every it worked out for everybody involved, especially the San Diego Padres. Oh my God, the San Diego Padres. I'm a Padre guy. Let's go. Listen, I go to uh, Petco every summer. I go there surfing and I usually uh, always go to Padre games. I love it there. Uh, we'll see how they do. They're in a wild card right now. They're not going to catch the Dodgers, but they just need to get there and see what happens. Uh, New York, uh, we're hearing, you know, stuff today that uh, Giants got J.D. Davis and prospects for, uh, I guess, Darren Ruff in a deal. That bores me. But what about the Yankees Hall, starting with Ben Attendi and then getting Frankie Montas and getting the young reliever from the Cubs, uh, the sidewinder, uh, I think the Yankees did really nicely at the deadline, to be honest with you. I did too. The one that did not move the needle a little bit for me was the Montas deal. It's not a bad pickup by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a little bit of concerns about his shoulder going forward. He's already been on the IL a couple of times, and this is a team that desperately needs not just a starter, but a starter that will remain on the field for the rest of the year. It can't be Garrett Cole all year long. Nestor Cortez has hit a couple of snags, but luckily Jameson Tyone on the mound tonight. Tyone's been phenomenal for the Yankees. This is a team that should just run away with their division. Yeah, they're in the AL East, which is devastating, and of course, the Houston Astros aren't going anywhere. As of right now, this is still a two-team league, not division, two-team league, Houston and New York. And quite frankly, it's going to come down to those two teams at the NL, at the ALCS. Why can't the Yankees beat the Astros? You should hear my language when I'm watching these games. They're just good. Trust me, I don't want the Astros to be good either. I want the Astros to die and go away forever, and it's not going to happen. I thought this was the year. In fact, I took out a foot plus 450 flyer on the Seattle Mariners before the season to win the division, and hey, it looks like they're going to be a playoff team, but I thought Houston was going to take multiple steps backward, losing out on Correa, uh, obviously getting back Verlander, but Verlander at 40 post-Tommy John, I didn't expect him to be have the second shortest odds in the American League when it comes right. to Cy Young futures. It's been unbelievable what these guys did hell Pena is there playing shortstop a rookie and no one even remembers that Carlos Correa was there as recently as last year it is the upside down in the AL West can you believe what they've done without Springer and Correa as Amazing. if they never existed Dude, not only that, they're doing it without Lance McCullers Jr. And finally, he's about to come back. So really, I'm terrified of what the Astros are going to do going forward. They just got their hands on Trey Mancini. They were sneaky during this thing. A backup catcher in Vasquez, if your backup catcher is Vasquez. And by the way, that Darren Ruff deal over to New York is a little bit bigger than I think it is for than, than most people would think. Because that just tells me Wilson Contreras, his market is shrinked by about three teams. Because right now, I was looking at Wilson Contreras to be going over to the Mets. This is going to leave nothing but but the possible the White Sox, the Tampa Bay Rays, who lost Mike Zunino for the year they need him. But the asking price is high, and this is going to be an interesting last 30 minutes. I can't fathom, Cody, that the Twins haven't made a move uh, with their pitching uh, to get Rodon today. They got two hours. Will they get it done or not? Are they seriously going to do nothing? They haven't won a playoff game since before Christ. I don't think they're going to do anything. I think this team is going to be the biggest disappointment in baseball only if they let the White Sox go and get somebody. Right now, the White Sox are letting me down exponentially. The fact that they haven't made any moves, the fact that they haven't gone over to the San Francisco Giants and thrown everything they can to get their hands on Jock Peterson and Rodon and get it back over to the south side is an embarrassment. As for the Twins... Whoever's going to win the Central is whoever makes a move in the next hour and a half. That's who's going to win the Central. None of these teams belong in the playoffs. In fact, the AL Central sucks. None of them should make the playoffs. Let the ALE put the Baltimore Orioles in. I don't want to see anyone from the Central. They suck. Hey, um, were you watching Tony falling asleep in the dugout like we were? I think it's awesome. Like, these things happen. You should see me. I pass out. Sometimes I'll, like pass gas, then pass out when I'm watching a Yankee game that's not exciting. You know, just third, fourth inning sometimes, Cody, I'll just slip away for like 30 minutes. You know, it happens. Yeah, but you're not managing the team, man. Tony La Russa, <laughs> good Lord, Hall of Fame baseball man. Just ask him. He'll tell you. Uh, it's just how this was allowed to happen to begin with, how it's allowed to continue. If you're a manager in the big leagues and you are netting your team actual losses based on the decision-making, your managers should be as noticeable as a chair. If I notice you, you're a bad manager. Managing a baseball game is as easy as it gets. You have to handle a bullpen. That's it. Now you don't even have to do double switches because there's DHs everywhere. It is an easy job. Not to mention you have 
every stat on planet Earth to tell you exactly what moves to make. It is an automated game at this point, yet Tony La Russa finds ways to make this team worse, and he's falling asleep at the trade day. Hey. Fire him 47 times <laughs> already. Were you... Uh, when you were in the show and in the clubhouse, obviously you were this crazy. Uh, were people telling you that you should get into uh, television and radio when you were playing and saying you're, you're in the wrong business? Yeah, I got a lot. But when I was with the Padres, in fact, when I got called up to the Padres, this is 100% true. I got pulled aside by our team president, Mike D. And he's like, hey, Cody, I'd like you to host our pregame show tomorrow. I'm like, I'm playing tomorrow. <laughs> like, yeah, we'd like you to host the pregame show tomorrow. I'm like, okay. I went and hosted the pregame show. And apparently the ratings went through the roof. Obviously, look at this. But on top of that, as the show continued, we're just going on and on. And then the next day, hey, let's do it again the next day. Great. I get called into the office. Hey, any interest in retiring and taking over the pregame show? And I was just like, I, I've, I've hit 200 home runs in the minor leagues to get up here, and that's what it took. And I just got here, and now you want me to quit? And looking back, I probably should have done it because I ended up flailing away in AAA and just becoming the real-life Crash Davis for all those years. But man, oh, man, yeah, I was always going to do this. Come on, look at this. Look at this jawline. Look at this beard. Look at this voice. I could Listen, uh, the Mafia found this guy. Like, he's got to know Jason Scott. I know he's friends with Derek, our buddy at Circa. Uh, we know Steven. I worked for him for a number of years. Very cool. I'm stoked to have you on the show. We got to get you back on again. I know you're busy as all hell, but we'll find time. Hopefully, you'll uh, enjoy it as much as we did. Thanks, dude. You're a badass. That was a lot of fun. Keep killing it. You're the man, Scott. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. Dan, what is your initial takeaway to that ruling from Judge Robinson? Um, I did mention, this is only kind of level one of the disciplinary proceedings. The uh, collectively bargained agreement between the NFLPA and the league basically says this impartial judge can assess a certain amount of suspension. You know, two games, five games, six games, 10 games, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, that final uh, appeal goes to Roger Goodell. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, I've just played my narrative for the under nine and a half. I suppose we should play the over for nine and a half. The reason why it would be set at nine and a half is one, I think some people are wagering that Sean Watson doesn't miss any time, right? You know, there would people be out there who say, look, if Watson's camp is appealing to get it down to zero games, then there's a chance that, you know, the Browns become like a 12 win team. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Trey Mancini from the Baltimore Orioles. So Mancini goes to the Astros. Package of prospects what? involved in that deal. What has he become on that team? Like an eight or a nine hitter? Trey Mancini, my daughter hits better than him. They act like this guy's some kind of big power hitter in Baltimore. Let's calm down. I mean, the kid Rauschman's better than Mancini. I don't care what anybody says. I think he's average. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. I'm high on Russell Wilson, but we'll get into some of these numbers here on the season. MVP, I think, makes the most sense. I would be a little more interested in that touchdown number. 
for Russ. In 2020, he threw 40 touchdown passes. The deep ball is there. He has the ability to stretch that field. We know it. And he does have good weaponry. We are anticipating in Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy as the two primary options. Only on Sports Grid. Carver, hi. Uh, uh, I mean, t- this deal for the Reds, uh, Molly, uh, you know, Mafia yeah. said it best. We would have been better off going to a concert and dipping our thumb in a bag of Molly than getting him. Well, the Twins got well, Molly. What? I mean, how cheap are you? You wanted the Twins to trade for a starting pitcher, so they traded for a starting pitcher. Tyler Molly from uh, the Cincinnati Reds for three uh, prospects uh, goes there. Uh, so that, oh. uh, I hope they're looking for more than just him. That's for sure. We have a couple of others for you too, Scotty. David Robertson goes back to the Phillies. Cubs trade Robertson to Philadelphia. Uh, so a little reunion there. You mentioned uh, to Cody that the Mets got Darren Ruff from the Giants for J.D. Davis and prospects. That deal is in the books. The Phillies also got Brandon Marsh from the Angels. Uh you know, Marsh, he's got like the who? long hair and the big beard. Brandon Marsh, who uh, could be a good defender, good glove. I'll uh, be out there maybe in center field. Is uh, this like the, Philly, the so. is this the crappy player hour that all the crappiest players in baseball got traded? I mean, honestly, well, every have, trade you just we, gave me was just absolute dog shack. We have two hours to go. Uh, we will see if we get any more. Uh, we've already had Soto go. Uh, and a few others. Uh, not many big names left on the board that we know of. Uh, we'll see if we could change that between now and 6 o'clock. Maybe Wilson Contreras from the Cubs. Maybe Rodon from the Giants gets moved. Uh, those are some of the names we're still looking for here. I mean, if you were the White Sox, would you go back, like Cody said, and get Rodon back to the White yes. Sox and Jock Peterson? Yes. I think it'd put yes. him over. 1,000%. One th- one I think the White Sox are... If they could just do something like that, that might be the little edge uh, to get them past those two teams. Uh, if I was them, I'd make that move right now. I think Cody's right. That division's ass melt. It's awful. 